Welcome to this tutorial on using ChatGPT to do descriptive analytics. My name is Ian and I'm going to be taking you through the tutorial. So this tutorial is part of a series of tutorials and we're going to be looking particularly at descriptive analytics, which is really about understanding what is the range of the values that you got within your data. What is your means? What's your 25th percentiles, your 75th percentiles? So basically it's about getting ChatGPT to be able to do these types of analytics for us. So we're going to basically take our data and ask ChatGPT to do these things for us. Please note, you do need the paid plan for ChatGPT to be able to follow with this set of instructions that we're going to be doing. Please also remember to like and subscribe to the channel so you can keep up to date with all our latest content. Let's jump into the tutorial and let's see how we're going to get ChatGPT to do this. Welcome to this tutorial. So we're going to continue with our series of tutorials that we've been doing on ChatGPT and data analysis. So if you've been following our series, thank you very much. And you would know that we've been using some sales data to be able to do these tutorials. Now, if you haven't been following the series so far, what I am going to do is I'm just going to quickly put up some Excel data just to show you the type of data that we're using for this data analysis, just to give you an overview of what you're going to see later on where the data came from. So I'm going to bring up Excel on the screen now. Okay, so here's our Excel spreadsheet of data that we've been using. And as you can see, it's basically sales data. So we've got an order ID that happened on a specific date. It's got a quantity sales profit. We've got the customer name and product details, product subcategory, product category, customer states. So quite a lot of information about that sales. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take this data sheet, we're going to upload it into ChatGPT, and we're going to do some analysis on it. Okay, so we're back in ChatGPT. I have used the little insert file button here. I've chosen my data file. And the first part that we're going to do is we're just going to load this into ChatGPT so we can work with it. Normally what I do is I just give it a prompt such as load the file and list fields. And basically this just means that it's going to load it up into ChatGPT. It will then do some analysis of the table and I can just make sure that it's actually seen the table correctly and it's listing out the fields. So when we're doing our analysis, everything looks good. Okay, so there we go. We've now got a listing of those fields. So I'm feeling comfortable that ChatGPT has understood the table of data. Now in this tutorial, we're gonna be looking at descriptive analytics. Now in the previous tutorial, we looked at exploratory data analysis. And basically descriptive analytics is, is really a part of the fact of exploratory data and analytics. But really understanding the overview of your data, what is the range of your values, the distribution of your values. So we're just gonna basically do some prompts and commands that we could use with ChatGPT just if you were doing a bit of descriptive analytics with your data. So the first part we're going to do is we're just going to tell this to actually form descriptive analytics on the table, on the table of data. And as I mentioned before in other tutorials, this is basically like you are speaking to a colleague and you're just requesting something or giving an instruction and basically you're just telling them what you would like to be done. And as I mentioned previously as well, it then goes into its analysis. Sometimes this comes back really quickly, sometimes not so quickly. Sometimes we might speed up the video while it's doing its analysis. But as you can see, this one has already come back pretty quickly. I'm going to see that the results stop being typed on the screen. And as you can see at the moment, we're starting to get some general statistics around the number of records, which is 8,399 rows. And then it tells me in the quantitative data that our order ID has got a range of such and such with an average, our order quantity, same type of thing. It looks at the sales and it looks at shows the range of the values. And it tells me there's a bit of significant variability. So I'm going to pause at this point. I'm going to let it finish doing all its typing out. And we're going to go back up to this set when it's finished, which it's actually now done. So as you can see, basically it's giving me an understanding of the range of values for each of the numeric fields and what the average is for that. So as you can see here, profits the ranges from a minus figure, it's quite a big minus figure, to the highest figure, suggesting some transactions resulted in losses while others were highly profitable. It shows me the range of order dates. So it shows me when it begins, when it ends, what is the most frequent date, we had 20 sales on that date it appears, how many customer names we've got, and who the most frequent customer was, customer states, again, which one's most frequent, the regions that we're using, product categories that we've got. So as you can see, I'll leave you to read this if you wanted to, and 
but you get an overview now of what is actually happening in this table of data. What are the range of values? What are the averages? What are the most frequent ones? And that's really the first part that we're doing with our descriptive analytics is to get that overview of that. Also telling me the no missing values. That's always good for your data analysis and that there's quite a broad distribution of those values. Now let's continue. Let's say we wanted to just pick one field and we wanted to do a bit more of this descriptive analytics. So let's say we want to do perform descriptive analytics on just the sales field. And again, we'll just give it a chance to do a bit of analysis there. Okay, so there we go again. We're now starting to get some information coming back, starting to tell me how many transactions there were, what was the average value, what's the standard deviation of this, the minimum amount, what was the 25th percentile. So what that means by 25th percentile is that it means 25% of the values are less than $143. So basically it's giving you a value to say at $143, 25% of your total transactions have happened at that value or smaller. Then we have the median, which is the middle value, and this is our 50th percentile. So it's telling us the median sales value is 449. So 50% of your values happen at $449 or smaller. Also, obviously, 50% of your values are higher than that as well. So that's really how the percentiles happen. But at the 75th percentile, you can basically know that 75% of your sales have happened at a value of $1,706 or lower. And then we have our maximum value as well. So as you can see, it's showing, it suggests a positively skewed sales pattern where the majority of transactions are relatively small. So we have a lot of small transactions. And if you saw the previous tutorial, you would have seen an exploratory data analysis that it actually showed that quite clearly as well. But here we've got a nice explanation of those values. Now what we could do is we could now do this in combination. So let's say, for example, this is for the whole table, but now you wanted to see by our different product categories, what are these values? And we could also tell it that we want to put this into a table. So let's say we want to create a table displaying the descriptive analytics for sales in combination with or product category. So there we go, create a table displaying the descriptive analytics for sales in combination with our product category. And as again, you can see that I've written that in a pretty easy statement to understand. There's no formulas, no coding, no difficult parts about this at all. And again, it's already now started to create the table, so that was pretty quick. And there we go, it starts building up my table for me. Now it starts showing me my mean, my standard deviation, the min values, each of the max that's percentage values as well. Now what you might notice over here is that with these means and the dollar values is that we've actually got some decimals there. So I'm not a big fan of decimals. I just find it harder to read those numbers when there's more numbers. So I'm going to fix that just now. But one thing to see, it does give me some insights. So it actually tells me for each of the different product categories, some of the things that is found. So it's done a little bit of analysis for me there. Okay, but let's actually format this table and we're going to say format the table with, I'm going to say a thousand separators and no decimals. Just to clean up that table a little bit. Okay, and again, you'll start to see our table being built. At this time, we have no decimals being shown. This makes it a little bit easier to see those values and understand those values. There we go. And again, it's going to give me the insights again. Give me a bit of the overview. Now, one thing just to point out as well, we have covered it in earlier tutorials, but if you haven't seen them, is that when you're doing this type of analysis, like for example, wherever you see this, is that you can actually click on this button. What it'll do is it will actually show you the Python code that was used to create the analysis here and what the results of that were. So here you can see we've actually got the Python code that was used for that. And just be aware of that, that whenever you see that, 
Okay, the last part that I want to show you is that if you wanted to take this table and you wanted to use it elsewhere, you can tell it to actually export the table. As you could say, as an Excel file. Just press enter on that and it will create a downloadable link for you to use that will give you that table. And there we go. We've now got the downloadable link that we could use for that table. So there we go. This is going to conclude this tutorial. But hopefully you've seen by just asking you to do some descriptive analytics. It gives you quite a nice bit of information about the overview of your table. And you could actually specify specific fields, get further insights and information if you wanted to. But I hope to see you in the next tutorial.